So Microsoft is taking their Xbox cloud gaming service to the next level, offering it on iOS devices such as iPhones and iPads, as well as PCs where you can leverage the power of their servers to play Xbox games in a Netflix style. Pretty crazy stuff. Let's talk about it. Alrighty guys, share my screen. I have a couple of articles pulled up with some pretty highlights on them. These will be cited or sourced down there in the description below as I do anytime I cover any news in the gaming community or industry. And you know that gaming news is huge when it reaches legacy outlets. Legacy news media platforms such as CNBC and MSN and Fox and stuff like that. So this article here is from CNBC. And of course, they're going to have some non-gamer jargon in there because, well, their primary audience is a bunch of boomers that probably doesn't know what the heck they're reading. So Microsoft's Netflix for gaming. So basically they're talking about cloud gaming, which as we know from our previous experiences with cloud gaming, such as Google Stadia, such as uh, Microsoft's xCloud, such as NVIDIA GeForce Now, um, it hasn't been on that level yet, like a Netflix for gaming. That is the end goal. That is the vision. That's the dream. That's the final goal of what we'd like to see with cloud gaming. But as far as uh, iteration, how it has actually been executed up until now, it has not been that smooth. But I think things are going to change, uh, not only with Microsoft kicking their xCloud servers uh, up a few notches, reaching out to new platforms like iPhones and, and um, PCs that aren't gaming PCs, they're just run-of-the-middle PCs. Uh, most importantly is people's home internet is actually getting to the level now, at least in most regions of North America, where they have the down and up speeds to be able to cloud game. Some people do not, but a good majority of people do have in their geographic area at least fast enough internet offered to them. Can they afford it or do they have those packages purchased? That's a different story, but they do at least have it offered in their zip code to their address. So they changed the name. It used to be called Microsoft xCloud. Now it's called Xbox Cloud Gaming. So not a huge change there, but it was on track to launch for iPhones and iPads earlier. But Apple updated its Apple Store rules in September that impacted services like Xbox Gaming and Google Stadia. Apple's move forced companies to use web browsers to redesign their services so they could circumvent the App Store rules. Under the rules, Microsoft, Google, and other companies with similar services, like NVIDIA, would have had to offer each game as an individual download instead of offering a complete library the way Netflix does for movies. That was another reason that we haven't been able to see um, the potential of cloud gaming, where you just download one application and it has an entire library of games and you don't install these games on your hard drive. You don't even download them. You literally open them up and stream them over the interwebs just like you would with a piece of digital content like a movie on Netflix. And I'm gonna get into a little bit more at the end of this video, some of the issues that we've had up until now with things like Google Stadia with massive latency where you press a button on your, your controller, it has to go up to the server, process it, come back down, and then two seconds later, your character does the actual motion that you've input for. But I don't think that's gonna be the case for much longer. Xbox Cloud Gaming is sort of like Netflix for games. People who subscribe to Microsoft's $15 per month Xbox Game Pass Ultimate plan can access more than 100 titles. So this is something important to mention right here. This is not a nether service. This is not a second service separate from Game Pass. If you already have Game Pass Ultimate, which I personally do recommend everyone does, especially if you own a PC and a Xbox One or Xbox Series console, because most of the titles are cross compatible so you save your game on your pc go to the bedroom or the living room where you have your console and your save games your troll fees your settings preferences everything is saved right there but on top of the already massive library of past present and future games on game pass i know i sell like i'm a spokesperson i'm selling it but i do think it's a great product uh, you're also getting xcloud gaming which is already available now for android phones but now it's going to be available for you know, iPhone users, it's going to be available for iPad users, and it's going to be available for people with janky old family Dells from the late 90s or some or some old porn burner PC down in the basement that barely runs. You're going to be able to play a good majority of these titles because it's not utilizing your hardware. It's utilizing the power of their servers. As long as you have a good enough internet connection and an Xbox style controller, you can play these games. Cloud gaming lets you stream games without having to download them, providing you have a fast enough internet connection. The streaming option is already available for Android phones, like I mentioned. Microsoft said it will begin to roll out the service 
in 22 countries, North America is one of them, and will continue to invite new users to try it. Players just need a Bluetooth or USB controller for most games, though touch controls are available for some of them. So uh, it seems like from what I've, the research I've done, about 25 to 30% of the library of the 100 titles that are available for xCloud you can play just on the screen of your smartphone. However, uh, it, it is a much better experience if you can Bluetooth connect a controller to your phone. Granted, you might not want to carry a controller around in your pocket, stop at the bus stop and pull a controller out of your tuchus and pull your phone out of your rump and get everything all hooked up. It might just be easier to play on your phone, but obviously... Um, touchscreen controls are not very intuitive and they're not, they're not great, obviously. All right, so here's the nitty gritty squeeze a titty summary and breakdown, guys, because I know a lot of you guys just want to get down to, uh, cut the technical mumbo jumbo and the jargon and just get right down to the facts for the consumer, the gamer. How does this actually work? Well, it utilizes your web browser. And so far, I think the supported ones are Edge, of course, because that's the recommended browser for Windows 10. It's Microsoft's little baby. Uh, Chrome, Firefox, and now Safari. So when you use a browser on whatever PC you're on, you connect to their their website, and you're able to stream games there. Kind of think of it like when you log into Netflix on a computer, the desktop, and you're able to stream movies. So it works like that. It's basically connecting to their servers, and it seems like xCloud, or Microsoft, I should say, is dumping a lot of money into xCloud when it comes to speeding up their servers so it's not going to become like another Google Stadia where they over-promise and under-deliver. It seems like they're under-promising and over-delivering, at least thus far. They're not saying this is going to be the most titty-popping, cornea-scorching, extra three inches on your peen uh, experience, but thus far, they've over-delivered on what they have shown us. Oh, I'm full as hell. I might have to tilt my seat back a little bit. <laughs> So it's not a huge library of games. It's 100, which is not a tremendous library. But the fact that you can play them on a tablet, iPhone, Android phone, an old janky PC, just by connecting to their web browser service and then either using the touch screens on a tablet or phone or using a controller is pretty cool. So I do feel like the combination of two things in conjunction, one being people's internet, at least in North America, becoming a little bit more um, normal and standard to be pretty pretty fast with down and up speeds and then also uh microsoft dumping a ton of resources time energy and money manpower into building up their x cloud servers i do think we're not going to have a lot of the same issues that we've had even looking back a year three years ago with cloud gaming like what we saw with the google stadia where there was they promised um <laughs> they promised mid to high end pc performance uh basically saying it was going to be able to run red dead Two at, at ultra settings. <laughs> How about you get your own bottle? The lie detector test shows that is a lie. It was uh, not good at all. It, it was more like 1080p mid settings upscaled to 4K with a poor, not consistent frame rate and substantial input delay. They said a bunch of games were going to be available. They were not. The games just were not playable or even available. So I feel like the combination of the the uh, endpoint users, internet being quicker, and then also the starting point, the servers actually being faster and more uh, ready to take on the, the heavy workload of basically supplying so many devices. I do think cloud gaming in the, within the near future, six to eight months, maybe a year at the most, is going to start becoming a little bit more normalized and a little bit more accepted and probably a little bit better, for lack of a better word, just straight up better. That's going to do it, guys. Drop in the comment section below your opinion on cloud gaming, not just necessarily Microsoft X Cloud, but Google Stadia, NVIDIA Now, or whatever streaming platform you might be looking at to get into cloud gaming. Or if you think cloud gaming is a long way off, like five to 10 years from being even playable. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.